to the first section of the School of the Prophet, uh, which is a part of uh, the New Life School of Ministry. Uh, and um, we start with the Prophet because uh, uh, here is a lot of things to say. Uh, we find a lot of teaching, uh, especially in the Old Testament, but also in the New Testament. It's uh, uh, quite a bit to, to uh, uh, say about the, the ministry of the Prophet. And also it's a, it's a very important uh, ministry for the Church, uh, because the prophetic ministry is a ministry of breakthrough. Uh, and, and what we need in the church uh, of this age is uh, this, this uh, breakthrough ministry uh, that we see that the prophet have been blessed with. So uh, therefore we start with the prophet uh, and also it's because I myself have, have quite a bit of experience uh, from the, the prophetic ministry uh, because before I I entered into uh, my calling as the as apostle. Um, I have functioned for at least twelve years in in a, a more prophetic ministry. So so uh, so have quite a bit of experience in this, and and also have been uh, writing a, have been written a book uh, about uh, the prophetic ministry, and also I'm writing two new ones. Uh, so, so there is a lot of teaching here to, to give you. But le let's continue uh, and, and start. Uh, and today it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a, uh, some kind of introduction into, into the prophetic in a way. Uh, and then we're going to elaborate that uh, quite a bit later on. Uh, it's going to be quite a few se sessions about the prophet. Uh, so so uh, we're going to go into quite details uh, about how to function as a prophet. Okay, let's uh, start with looking at what it says in, in uh, 1 Corinthians. And uh, chapter 14 and verse 31. There it says, for you can all prophesy one by one, all that all may learn and all may be encouraged. For you can all prophesy one by one. And and let's also go to Acts uh, chapter 2. And we read from, uh, from verse 17. And it shall all come to pass in the last days, says to God, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Uh, your old men shall dream dreams. And on my maid servants and on my male servants, uh, I will pour out my Spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. So he here we find... Uh, two portions of scripture that says that we are all supposed to prophesy. Paul says to the church in Corinth that you shall can all prophesy one by one. As long as you, you do not do it in the mouth of each other, you, you, uh, you, uh, you ha can prophesy. But, uh, and also here in Acts, uh, we see that God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh, and then all our sons and daughters, all our young men and all our old men shall prophesy or have, you know, prophetic visions or prophetic dreams, and and, and speak prophetic words. So so this is something that is for all, and it is the fulfillment of the the great uh, wish that. Uh, that Moses said when he said oh that the whole people of God should become prophets by God putting his spirit upon them you can find it you know when when, when God is telling him to 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 uh, to 
give some of the, his work over to the 70 elders and, and you know that they should all come out to the to the tent of gathering and, and uh, then he shall t should take the spirit that was upon Moses and put upon them and then he does and they start to prophesy and, and you know uh, and then there is two that have not come out to the tent and, and uh, they are prophesying in the camp and, and Joshua is you know sealers and, and says Moses stop them but then Moses comes with this wish you know in front of God that oh the whole people of God should become prophets prophets you know by him by God putting his spirit upon them and that is you know what God is promising uh, to do you know through the prophet of Joel uh, uh, and and and, um, and then he's doing it on the day of Pentecost and 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 uh, Peter yeah, the apostle is, is recognizing this is it this is what uh, Joel said this is the pr what is the fulfillment of what Joel prophesied about and, and now you see it and and from there on you know it's established uh, and and uh, and uh, this is the, the what we can live in now you know we live in this uh, this established uh, truth that God has put out, poured out His Spirit upon all flesh, and we shall prophesy. Um, but then there is a distinction here. Uh, you know, you find here two different ownerships. Uh, first, for these three that uh, God is talking about first, the, the, the sons and the daughters, and then the young men, and then the old men, He says, yours. So it's it's the the property of the church, yours, yours sons and daughters, yours uh, young men, yours old men. They shall all prophesy, all have visions, all have dream dreams. But then he says, but I will also put on out my spirit upon my maid servants and my male servants. Who are these? Who are these my? Those that God looks upon as his property. They are the gift that Jesus gives to the church. They are Jesus' property and he gives them to the church and they are the fivefold ministers. They are the male servants and the maid servants. They are the slaves of God. They, they are there, you know, to minister uh, according to the will of God and he says I will put on my spirit upon them also and they shall prophesy uh, but here it is not talking about you know the the the, the first and foremost uh, the, the the spiritual gift of prophecy which you find in first Corinthians you know described no it is the the ministry gift of the prophet that we talk about here uh, both are prophesying, you know, both through the spiritual gift and through the ministry gift. You are prophesying, but it's something to prophesy and it's another thing to be a prophet. It, it's like, you know, with a fish, you do not become a fish by swimming in water. I don't know if you have tried, but uh, uh, you will soon realize that you are not a fish, even though you are swimming in water. And that is also how it is with to be a prophet you don't you don't become a prophet by prophesying of course a prophet is prophesying but the, the distinction here is the calling are you called to become a prophet then you can become a prophet you do not become a prophet by prophesying all God's people are supposed to prophesy but some are made prophets and and of course you can find that in in uh, in uh, in uh, Ephesians 4:11. Uh, we can just quickly read there. Ephesians 4 and verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors 
and teach us some, not all. So, so, so Paul said to the Corinthians, you can all prophesy, but then he says here, some are made into prophets. So this is a distinction. There is a difference here. Uh, and and w what we're going to do here in this, this uh, school of ministry is that we will talk to you as if you are one of those that are called. Called into some kind of ministry. Because that is the basis, you know. You need, that is what you need to become a minister. You need the calling. It's God that does the election. We cannot elect you by, you know, educate you. Uh, you do not become elected by getting education. You need to be called. And that is an experience that you and have between you and God. God is calling you and you know if you are called. Uh, and and uh, that calling might come in different ways. It can be, be somebody is prophesying over you. It might, it might uh, come like, you know, with, with Paul. You know, very strong. Uh, he was, you know, thrown off the, off the horse and so on. You know, uh, and uh, oh, it can might might come as a quiet, just something that starts with a wish. You know, you you s get something in you that you know uh, grows into a strong conviction that you are called. Uh, so so, I I'm not here to judge how your calling is, you know if you are called or not. Uh, uh, and, uh, and you need that to become a minister. Uh, and then, of course, that is the, the, the starting point, the calling. Then you need to get uh, teaching about how to function. Then you need to come into the function, grow into it, you know, and start function in the function. And then, you know, get recognized by the church and they will lay their hands upon you and, and ordinate you into into an office of a prophet or office of a pastor or whatever and then you know then you start fulfilling your ministry so 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 it's it's a it's a long road here uh, and we cannot help you with the whole road we can give you some tools some principles and, and of course, uh, so, some, some from our experience, you know, uh, that can help you. And, uh, and we will do it like this, you know, me talking with you, not like a, like a preaching from the pulpit, but more like me talking to you, minister to minister, in this like slow beat kind of way. And I hope you will find it helpful and that it will become a blessing for you. But let's let's continue with the teaching for today. And let's go to Second Peter. Um, and, and look at a very important aspect of this. Uh, when we talk about the prophet. Because, you know, it's easy to call yourself a prophet. And it's easy to, you know, start to prophesying, uh, you know, uh, what I often call like... Uh, good wishes, you know, oh, I see this and this over you, and it's, it's not actually a prophecy, uh, a prophetic word is more like a good wish from you, and of course a good wish is, is nice, but of course it's even better when it actually is a prophecy, a prophetic word, uh, and, and um, it's I I important to, to be sober in this, uh, and, and let's go read from uh, Second Peter, Second Epistle of Peter, uh, chapter one and, uh, and verse nineteen. <clears throat> and there it says, "And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, uh, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts." Knowing this first, that no uh, prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For, pro uh, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. 
And then we read from Jeremiah 23. And we read first uh, uh, verse 9 there. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine has overcome because of the Lord and because of his holy words. So he, he, here Jeremy, Jeremiah is, is so shaken, you know. And he says it's because of the prophets. And let's continue in verse 16 and see why he is so shaken. Uh, and there it says, For who has stood in the counsel of God, of the Lord? No, no, sorry, uh, we start in 16. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, that make you uh, worthless, that speak a uh, vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. They continue to say to those who despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. And now, and to everyone who uh, walks according to this, the dictates of his own heart, they say, no evil shall come upon you. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord? And has perceived and heard his word who has marked his word and heard it okay so so he, here we find you know uh, this rebuke of the prophets of Israel uh, and and uh, and you know Jeremiah which is a true prophet you know he is shaken you know uh, from the prophets that he looks upon and, and, you know, they, they are just prophesying, you know, oh, everything is good, everything is going to be fine, yeah, do not worry, be happy, and so on. Um, I, I often talk, call them the uh, gold and green woods prophets, you know. They, they talk about, you know, only blessings, you know, never dare to, to speak the truth the prophetic truth to people and 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 you know Peter said you know that no prophetic word is is to be produced by yourself it's something that the Holy Spirit moves us to to do you know he moves us gives us what we're gonna say and then you know moves us into saying it and, and, and that is the whole basis of being a prophet. It's so important that you never produce any prophetic word. You know, there is a lot of reasons why people produce prophetic words, you know. They think that maybe, maybe you know, by giving a prophetic word, they can become something, you know, uh, that they can... Uh, can uh, grow in people's eyes and you know whatever and and and, and of course these things are, are easy to fall into and and there's a lot of examples from the Bible of prophets that have fallen into this trap you know and and what God says here is that in in verse 18 for who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and has perceived and heard his words. This is the foundation of being a prophet. You need to be hearing the words of God and then you have something to say. Then you have something to prophesy. So this is, you know, make it or break it. Uh, here you become a prophet or you fall as a prophet. You become a false prophet. Because if you start producing prophetic words from your own heart, then you are a false prophet, my friend. So you need to start st 
stay in the counsel of God. And what does that mean? It means to take the time. It means to take the time to stand and just listen. Listening to God. Stay in His presence. And then, if He doesn't speak to you, you still stand there. If you have a preaching that you need to, you know, prepare for, and you want the prophetic word and so on, God is not, is not moved by our needs. He is moved by His own timetable. So it's so important to let Him speak when He wants. But then when He speaks, you better listen. You have to listen and be ready to give it to those that He speaks to. So, so this is so important. This is the most important lection uh, that I can give you about the, prophet, the prophetic ministry. And, and, and I will repeat this so many times and in so many forms, you know, because this is to be a prophet or not to be a prophet. To be able to hear from God. It's not something that you produce from your own heart, from whatever you see, you know. It's so in easy, you know, to, to, to fall in the trap that or you see something in the natural and then you start, you know, to prophesy into that. You should never do that. Only prophesy when you hear a word from the Lord. Okay. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, we, we, um, we can go to Habakkuk uh, 1. Because how, how do you get to here? Because, uh, you know, uh, it's easy to say that you should only speak when you hear. But you know, need also to know how to hear. And, and, you know, the first clue was what we said about the counsel of God. And that it has to do with you taking the time. You taking the time to stand in the counsel of God. And, and, and uh, as a prophet, God has, has uh, connected His will to the ministry of the prophet. He doesn't do anything without first telling the prophets. Uh, so, so, so he will, he will speak, you know, because God wants to do things, and he is, he is busy, you know, uh, with doing stuff uh, in in your country, in your life, in your church, in whatever, and 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 he says, I will not do anything before I tell it to my servants, the prophets, and that is is you know, it's God's words. He has not changed. He has not come with a new, a new words that says, uh, "By the way, uh, you can, uh, uh, you know, take away what uh, I said to Amos. Uh, it doesn't apply anymore." It's, there's no words that says that. So this is how it is still. Um, so so he has connected his will to the ministry of the prophet, and, and therefore it's so important that we have prophets that stands there and listen to the Holy Spirit, stands in the, in the counsel of God so that they can prophesy out the will of God and then, you know, the Apostle comes and takes that in the Spirit, you know, but first a prophet has to prophesy it because God is not sharing His, His glory with any man. So therefore He says, in front of what he does, what he wants to do, so that nobody can say that, oh, this is what I did. No, God has already said that how he wants to do it, and then he does it. So, and then he gets all the glory. Okay, Let, let's read here in, in, uh, in um, now in Hebrew, Hebrew, uh, sorry, in Hebrew 1. Because how do you hear? Uh, and uh, I think I need to get me a little bit better light here. And next time, it's, uh, my it's hard to read the text. Um, the he Hebrew one. And we 
verse 1. Then it says, God who at various times and in various ways spoke uh, in time past to the fathers by the prophets. Okay, here it says, God who in, at various times and in ver various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. So he, he, there is there is various ways that God speaks to us, and and of course we read in in uh, Acts two uh, about three ways. For instance, uh, we read that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That is through the 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 spiritual gift of prophecy, which is a an an, an instant instant uh, prophetic word in a way. It's like yeah, you know. The Holy Spirit comes upon you and, and gives you a word that you prophesy there and then. And you know, you feel the heartbeat and, and you feel, uh, you know, the urge of the Holy Spirit to so that you should prophesy something. That is, is one way. The next way is visions, which, uh, which uh, we read about, you know, your young man shall see visions. And here there is different kind of visions. There is this kind of open vision uh, where you see with your eyes uh, and, and you might see, for instance, uh, an angel or, or maybe Jesus comes to you and speak with you uh, or you see something in the nature and, and, uh, and, and you hear uh, something. It, that is an open vision. Uh, or you, we have these closed visions which is when we see with our heart's eye, the eye in our heart. And, and you know, we doesn't see with our natural eyes, but we see pictures in our spirit. Uh, and and uh, both these are visions uh, and, uh, and uh, so a way that God sp speaks to us. And then we have uh, the old man shall dream dreams. Uh, and that is, of course, what you do when you sleep, uh, you have dreams, and and God speaks through them. And and uh, of course, not every dream is from God, but some are from God. And and we're gonna, uh, you know, give you some teaching about uh, dreams from God and how to interpret them and so on. Uh, but that will be a, a later section. So so but. Uh, God speaks through various ways, and and it's it's important to see this so that you are not you know uh, closed uh, in your mindset you know that this is the way that God speaks to me, because God will speak to you in different ways, uh, and 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 most often probably through the still inner voice you know the you know the Holy Spirit. Is, is speaking in your spirit in, in this still and soft way uh, and then you have to listen to it to it and, and, and you know get what he speaks about in your spirit but then it might all also you know be, be a strong way and I, and I have had some very strong uh, ways that God has been speaking to me uh, for instance, once I, I, I drove a bus in a, in a former work I had when I was 25 years ago or something like that. So it's, it is approximately 25 years ago uh, now. So, but then while I was driving, suddenly I got this, this, uh, this, this uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, 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 not a rapture, or, but you know, you get caught up in the spirit in a way. Uh, it's, it's like when God is taking all your senses and and He shows you a vision, uh, and and uh, uh, and and uh, so, so and and it's like this. This continued for some minutes, and I had you know during the time I had driven the bus uh, perfectly, you know. Uh, as it should, uh, but God does what He wants, and and uh, so so, and and it's important to to you know 
be open for what the Holy Spirit will do in your life and and, and not uh, you know uh, try to to confine him into your small box you know this is how it should be you know so it's important to to be open for how God is speaking to you because he will use his whole you know toolbox uh, he is not you know just using the one that you are used to no he, he will take his whole register of uh, revel revelatory instruments in a way uh, to, to speak to you and, and you need to be able to listen in, in all the ways that he is speaking to you okay uh, and, and uh, let's go to, to uh, um, yeah we, we can jump to to uh, to Psalm 131 and and because to listen to the Holy Spirit it's important to see that uh, when God speaks to you he speaks in your spirit you know you are you are a, a three parts you are you are a, a person uh, and, and you are you you're made of three different parts you know uh, you have a you are a spirit you have a soul and you live in a body you have this this you know this three-folded uh, kind of being uh, just like the temples they had an outer court they had a holy and they had a holy of holies and that's also how you are you are a temple of for the Holy Spirit and you also have these three parts you have the outer court in your life is the is the flesh uh, your body uh, and then you have the holy which is your soul and then you have the holy of holies which is your 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 spirit and God lives in your spirit the Holy Spirit lives in your spirit uh, and and together with your spirit the Holy Spirit is, is saying that you are uh, he is confessing that you are a son of God uh, and so so <clears throat> And and, uh, and and when he speaks to you, he speaks in your spirit. But then you 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 perceive it. You you or you 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 listen to it through your soul. And and here becomes here is the problem, you know, because what God speaks in your spirit is perfect. He it's not like it's getting contaminated there. And that is perfect there. But then when you are you're gonna communicate it to others you do it through your soul and there you have your feelings your emotions and 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 your will and so on you know and and all these things can come in and contaminate what was perfect in your spirit and then when it goes through your mouth it has become something not perfect anymore uh, and uh, and let uh, uh, just uh, um, yeah. Let let's go to Psalm one hundred thirty one uh, and we read from verse two there. Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul, like a, a weaned child with his mother, like a, a weaned child in is my soul within me. O Israel, hope in the Lord, from this time forth and forever. Here, here David is saying that. His, 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 his soul 
he has, you know, uh, he he is not longer this, you know, this screaming child, you know, you know, you know, the babies when when they when you know they are born, they only think about their needs, you know, they have a need for for milk, then they scream, they have a need for for warmth, then they scream, they have a need for you know, being changed upon, you know, then they scream. It, it, it's the, of course, it is the, the, the baby, that's the way of the baby. But then, you know, they are supposed to grow, and they are supposed to, you know, get, get uh, uh, you know, uh, turned away from, from the breasts of the mothers, you know, and, and, and start to become mature. And that is also how you need to become. Your soul has to be like this, this, this child that has grown up, and and is not longer screaming for their needs. So, so it's so important, you know, to be able to listen to what the Holy Spirit says. You have to have a a, a soul that is no longer just screaming for your needs. Uh, and and uh, 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 as David says, you have to have this uh, uh, have the soul uh, that is like a, a weaned child. Uh, uh, and, and and you know and uh, therefore it's so important to to be to be able to you know. Uh, Paul is saying when we when that we are prophesying in part, and and, and uh, but this part that is prophetic of what we are prophesying should become more and more, you know, so that the prophetic words are better are, are more and more perfect in a way. Is uh, the percentage of what is from God should be more and more. Uh, and, and less of us but still you know when the prophetic word is going through our soul it gets contaminated with words from us you know uh, and and but as long as you have a soul that is not like this this screaming child you know uh, then God can you know get through your soul in a much better way with his prophetic words because if if your sh soul is, is a childish soul you will have you know you will prophesy in part and and you will prophesy as a child and and we need to prophesy as grown men and we need to grow up you know in the prophetic mature in the prophetic so that all that God has can come out in a good way and, and so, so the first part, how to hear the, the voice of the Lord. You need to mature in your spirit. You need to put aside your needs and start to just, you know, in your prayer life. In Matthew 7 and verse 7 it says, Pray and, it, sh and you, it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. And knock and it shall be opened for you. And you know, in your prayer life, the first you know, world of the prayer life is, you know, pray and it shall be given to you. That is, you know, when you, when you have your needs and, and you pray about your needs. And, and God is there to answer your needs. But then, you know, you need to come to the next level, which is to seek. Seek and you shall find. That is when you seek the Lord, seek the Holy Spirit, seek the presence of God, and there He can start speaking to you. Then you, then you have put aside your needs, put aside the things that you, your, you know, fleshly needs, and the things that you, your soul is screaming for, because they will, you know, these things will hinder you from listening to the Holy Spirit. If you have this big need that is screaming, you know, all the time in your life, then that is the only thing that you will hear. Therefore, you need to have this, 
the soul that has grown up, that it's no longer just uh, 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 no longer are just occupied with your needs, you know, but uh, instead, you know, having the focus up to the Lord, you know, and, and listening to Him. Uh, so therefore, that is the first step. You need to have this mature soul. And then let's go to Habakkuk 2. Uh, Habakkuk 2 and verse 1. There it says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. I will stand on my watch. I will set myself on the rampart. So here, this is a, an active deed from Habakkuk. He, he, he is like... Now I'm going to listen. I'm going to stand here and listen and see what God will speak to me. And, and, and uh, there is, is, you know, an important part where you actually take the time. When you set aside a time and you just, you know, stand on your watch. And, 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 and stand there until you hear something. Uh, so this is an active uh, part from you where you you know uh, get into the presence of God you you start you know praise him and 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 you know uh, you go you, you know the walk uh, from from the outer court into the holy of holies and then you know stand there with the 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 ta the, the, the table of incense you know, where you are praising, your praise is incense, you know, that goes up to the, to, to the Lord. And then you are standing between the lampstand and the, the table with the, 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 the breads. And, and there is the point of revelation. And God spoke to Moses and said, here I will reveal myself to you in front of that. And, and so this is a, it's a, it's a, place of revelation and and that is is something that you can move into both in your prayer life as I spoke about you know when you go from just pray for your needs and then you start to seek him or you can do it in praise and worship because you know uh, there is a there is a, a walk you know, that you you know enter through your gates with praise and you into your your court uh, with thanksgiving and then you get into the into your your uh, holy place i will go with uh, with a deeper kind of praise you know it's it's a it's a walk here uh, from a, a kind of outwardly uh, like a, a superficial kind of uh, uh, of praise to a deeper uh, uh, type of praise where, where you just you know pour out your heart as this incense in front of God and there he starts to reveal himself to you and and you know so it is an active deed from you it is an active work from you where you are putting standing in a place where God can speak to you you stand on the rampart you stand on your watch and that is an active part from you. So, so the first part, you know, have this mature soul, uh, put away this scream for your needs, uh, and, and, uh, and then, you know, take the time, get into the presence of God in, through praise or in your prayer life, uh, and there He will speak to you. And then it's in, let's take the last thing in in uh, in let's go to first kings first 
First Kings and uh, chapter 19. Uh, and we read from uh, uh, verse 9 there. And there he went into a cave and, and spent the night in the place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, uh, torn down your altars, and, called your pro uh, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and they seek to uh, take my life. Then, it's, then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. So it was, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face uh, in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Uh, suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Okay, this is a very, very important and in interesting uh, uh, part. And, and we can also read verse 18 here. And he said, I have uh, been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I am alone. Uh, I alone am left, and I have seek to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, "Go, return to your uh, on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and then and when you arrive, anoint Hazel of as king of Syria. Also you shall appoint Jehu the son of uh, Nishrim as king of Israel, and Elisha." Uh, the son of Shaphat uh, of uh, Abel Mahola, uh, you, sh you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall be that uh, whoever uh, escapes the sword of Hazel, Yehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Yehu, Elisha uh, will kill. Yet I have re uh, reserved seven thousand in Israel, and whose, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal. And every mount uh, that has not kissed him. So, so here we see <laughs> Elijah. Uh, Elijah uh, he has just, you know, been having his greatest victory on the Mount, mount Camel, and and he has slain, you know, four hundred fifty uh, prophet of Baal and so on. And 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 uh, then, you know, uh, the Queen Jezebel is is, uh, you know threatening him once and he is you know going down into the basement uh, literally he is you know he asked the Lord to take his life and so on and then the Lord sends him to this this cave in the Mount of Horeb and and and, uh, and then he he is coming to him and, and he's asking him, why are you here Elijah and you know then then Elijah comes with his, his story you now uh, that oh I'm left alone and and uh, and Israel doesn't want me and they try to kill me and so on, so so and there is a lot of things you know that come comes in into a prophet's life because uh, the life of a prophet might be a very lonesome life in a way it, it it's um, it's easy to to feel forsaken it's easy to feel that you are the only one this kind of ex exclusivity that the prophet might feel sometimes uh, and 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 but God wants 
to to take these things out of us. Uh, so so you know he wants to recalibrate us so that we can listen to his voice more correctly. Because if you have both fear, you know, he was running for his life. And he had this feel of exclusivity. He said, I am the only one. But, and, and he also says that they all try to kill me. So he has, you know, fear, exclusivity, and, and this, this uh, uh, feeling of forsaken uh, in himself. And all these three can contaminate how you listen to the Lord. So, so it's important to let the Lord deal with your soul, deal with the things that in, is in your soul. You are not the only one. You are not exclusive. You are part of a great church. You are gr part of, of a great family of God where there is a lot of prophets. Uh, and so you are not alone. Uh, and, and it's important that you see this so that you do not get this this uh, this kind of uh, you know I am the only one that listened to the Lord uh, kind of syndrome because then you are useless you are there to work together with five types of ministers in a church a church can, that is in, is uh, of a people that is prophetic so they all can listen and they can all prophesy but you are a prophet and and and, and she'll function as a prophet, but not this exclusive kind of type of prophet. And of course, fear is something that you need to get rid of, and also this this feeling of being forsaken. God is dealing with it in in Elijah here. He says, "You are not alone. I have seven thousand here, seven thousand that has not bowed their knees to bow." So so. It's so important to see this, and 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 God wants to you know tune us into His channel, you know when in the old times when He had these radios, you know, where where we had this tuning uh, knob, you know, that uh, we had to turn till we got the right signal, because until we were straight on the station you know it was like uh, we could almost hear what I said but there was so much noise so much you know <laughs> things you know uh, uh, until we had fine tuned us into what the right station and that is also how you have to do you have to fine tune yourself and that is what God here does he you know he goes in front of him first in the in this you know great wind and the earthquake and then the fire but God was not in neither of these but then you know in this still small voice and then you know Elijah he he recognized it and he then he went out and God could spoke, speak to him so so and it's so important to you know f to to let God recalibrate us to fine-tune us so that we listen to what God says and, and how he does it is to you getting rid of the fear, your exclusivity and your forsakenness. You are not alone, you are not exclusive and you are not forsaken. God is with you and your church love you and, 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 and they will love you when, when you come into the full function. Uh, all these other things will just make you weird will 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 you know make you into something that they cannot you know fully fully appreciate so it's so important that you you get the uh, the right message and and get you know your soul in balance in a way so 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 uh, so that can, God can use you fully so Father, I just pray for each and every one that have listened to this. I pray for those that have this the, the calling into the prophetic ministry, that you start dealing with their souls. Let them mature. Let them, you know, go from being, you know, this, this screaming child, 
that just sees his own, you know, problems, his own needs, and so on, and and let them get into the position where they can listen to you, where they can seek you, where they can stand and get the revelations from God. And and I just pray that you you uh, you anoint them and and uh, let the word go in and do its work in them so that we can see a lot of mature prophets rise up in this time because the church needs them and and, and we need them and and father we just pray that you release them into all what god what you have for them in jesus name amen God bless you. I hope you have got something from this. Uh, and uh, we will continue uh, next week with a new session about the prophet in the School of Prophet. And, and, uh, and uh, yeah, we see how long we do it. And, and, uh, and uh, you will find all the different sections under the, the folder of the, the School of the Prophet here on this YouTube channel. God bless you, have a blessed week, and, uh, and see you next time.